Before we get into any really complicated definitions or formulas, let's think about a simple little situation involving a square. I've got this square laid out. I've colored the different four corners so we can tell where it started and where it ends up. And I've also marked around the outside here what those starting positions were. What we want to think about is what are all the different ways we can pick up that square and put it back into the same slot we took it out of. So, the simplest thing would be to just take it out, put it right back, and not really change anything. A little bit boring, but it is a perfectly valid way to do that. Slightly more interesting would be to pick it up, turn it, and put it back in. We're going to call that a rotation. And you notice the way that I turned it, I turned it counterclockwise. In mathematics, often rotations are done that way. They're done counterclockwise. It's a little bit backwards from the way a lot of people think. So what I did there, I picked it up, I rotated it 90 degrees in that counterclockwise direction. I could just as easily pick it up, turn it a full 180 degrees, put it back in. From that starting position, I could pick it up. If I turn it 90 degrees clockwise, that's the same thing as rotating it 270 degrees counterclockwise. And then finally, if I pick it up and I rotate it through a full 360 degrees and put it back, it's really like I just picked it up and put it right back and really didn't need to do that rotation at all. So, like I said, we're going to call those four moves rotations. And we're going to label them by that degrees that we rotated it through in a counterclockwise direction. This one right here is the starting position. We'll call that a rotation of zero. Here, we pick it up, put it in like that. I had to rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise. Picking it up, turning it all the way upside down and putting it back in. That's a rotation of 180 degrees. And then finally, picking it up, going one, two, three, putting it in, that's a rotation of 270 degrees. But that's not the only things we could do to pick it up and put it back into that same spot. Another thing I can do is pick it up and flip it over and put it back in. Those are called reflections. And I've labeled on here what the different ways we could reflect it are. What I just did, I picked it up and I reflected it across a vertical line. So, we're going to call that reflection V. I could reflect across any one of these lines. This H horizontal line would be flipping it up and then flipping it top to bottom. And it would end up like that. We've got two diagonals we could flip it across. This one here, from top right to bottom left, flipping across that diagonal, puts it like that. We'll call that D. And we'll call flipping across the off diagonal, we'll call that D prime. So, we can end up in any one of these positions as well. This would be, if we look at it, we have flipped the green and the black, but the red and the blue have stayed similar. So, if we're flipping the green and the black, we're flipping across the main diagonal. Here, the red and the green have flipped, the blue and the black have flipped, so that's flipping across the horizontal. Here, we've flipped the red and the blue, but the green and the black are in the same spot. That's flipping this way. That's flipping across the off diagonal. 
And then finally, here, the red and the black have flipped, the green and the blue have flipped, so that's flipping across the vertical. Now, the question is, are these all the ways we can do it? Are there, could there possibly be some others? Let's do just a little bit of combinatorics here. The red has to end up in one of the corners. So there are four places the red could end up. But as soon as we know where the red ends up, the blue has to be in the opposite corner. The red and the blue, no matter how we pick it up, rotate it, flip it, do whatever, those are always going to be across from each other. Similarly, the green and the black are always going to be across from each other. So, if I know where the red is, and I know where the green is, then I know exactly how that thing is placed. I've laid this out so we can kind of see that. Both of these right here have the red in the same place. Both of these right here have the red in the same place. These have the red in the same place. These have the red in the same place. Once we know where the red is, it, the green can't be in the opposite corner because the blue has to be in the opposite corner. The green can either be there or there. There for that the rotation, there for the reflection. So, for each of the four places where red can end up, there are two places where the green can end up. So, there are a total of four times two. Four times two gives us there can only be eight different places. So, what happens if we start doing more than one move? What would happen if I did, first of all, a rotation by 90, and then do a flip across the vertical line? Let's just take it in a couple of steps. I take it, I rotate 90, again, has to be counterclockwise. Line like that. Uh, so it ends up in this position right here. Which is, right here, that gives us a D prime. Doing a rotation by 90, then doing a flip across the vertical line, is the same thing as flip it, just doing a single flip across that off diagonal. Let's pause for a second and then we'll pick up in the next video.